what I consider the three very important parts of a landscape. Clouds, trees and grass and earth. And I'm going to show you those techniques and then I'm going to paint a picture using them. Now here we go, we're off with a brush and we're off with a colour. You won't be seeing my face for quite a while, but you'll certainly be seeing a lot of the brushes and I hope you enjoy it. Now before you start painting, you should be highly organised. Now I'm going to use two brushes for this cloud study and you never want to be in the stage where you're saying where's the brush, where's the razor blade and so on. You should have everything ready before you start. Now I've got a piece of paper here to test. It's a, an old discarded painting of mine and I use the back of the paper for testing the colours. And uh, while I'm on it, with this mount, I, this is the three techniques I'm going to show you. There's clouds, this is a razor blade technique in here with the earth and the old varnish brush is going to show you how you do that grassy edge. And although this is not a complete picture, I've just painted this one to show you the three techniques. And the clouds I'm going to show you are that. But whenever you are, if you were painting a picture this size, you always have a mount like that just of any old card, any old white cardboard, just to have a look and see how it's progressing. And as we go ahead with the paintings, you'll see me using mounts all the time. Now another thing you must keep in mind is that the paper's fairly expensive, so don't try to practice on a half sheet for a start, and certainly not on a whole sheet. This is the size I recommend. Put a line across the middle of the paper and work on that size. And if you've ruined it, well, there's no great loss. And there's one thing you must keep in mind all the time, that failure dogs the watercolourist. Well, I'm going to paint, show you how I paint that cloud study there. Uh, I'm never absolutely certain that it'll come out exactly as I want it. And I'll t tell you one thing, I certainly won't be able to paint that exactly as it is there, because it's going to be done wet in wet, and uh, by that I'll explain that as I, when I come to it. Uh, when you're doing wet in wet, you just do clouds but they won't be exactly the same, but I'm going to show you now how to do that type of cloud study. Right, now I've got all the things I need for this exercise, two largish brushes. Never try to do a watercolour that size with a tiny little brush. Instant insanity as far as I'm concerned. Always use the largest brush that you can use for the job. And I'm using the three quarter inch one for this. That's the number eight one. Now I have my Kleenex tissues. Now I use a bucket for my water. Uh, you can please yourself what you use. Use bottles or anything you like. Uh, some people use bottles and mix their paints in saucers. Perfectly satisfactory. It all depends on what you like. Now let's first of all mix up the colour I want for the cloud. Now here we have to be very specific. Now put the light red in first. This Windsor Blue is a very powerful colour so I have to be very careful. Now just add a small amount of Winds of blue to that, that looks a bit too dark. Now I'll try that out. Just a little more blue, I think. Right, that'll do. Now I've got the colour ready to paint the clouds. And notice I'm going, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to paint the clouds first, then put the blue. When I first started painting watercolours 30 years ago, somebody told me to put the blue in first, then leave holes and paint the clouds. Well, I soon dropped that method. Now, I'm going to wet this with clean water. And this is called the wet in wet technique. Now, you'll notice that I mix my colour before I wet the paper. If you wet the paper, then try and mix your colour. By the time you come back here, of course, the paper's uh, dry and so you're in a real mess. Now, too much water is just as bad as not enough. You've just got to get enough water there. Right, now let's use the bigger brush and put our colour on. I think I might strengthen that colour a little bit just so you can see it better. That's better. Leaving plenty of white gaps.
Right, now don't waste any time. Get some Antwerp blue. That's the blue I use for the sky. Now clouds, if you've become a studier of the landscape, as I'm telling you, the whites of the clouds are invariably on the tops. So leave some white gaps above the clouds. Don't be too fussy here. One of the troubles you'll find as a beginner is you, you, you're just a bit frightened to really go for it. With a bit of practice and experience, you'll find you'll loosen up completely. Now I get my Kleenex tissues and I just soften the edge of the top of the clouds. And that's about it. Now that is left. I never retouch cloud studies. Uh, that's it. Now I let that dry out. 